Bowls. I'm going to go into Bowls. To spend 14 days in Bali can go so many ways. There is the nature side of things, beautiful beaches with red sunsets, island day trips, dolphin encounters, oh my god, mountain hikes, shopping sprees, purifications, meeting a Balinese healer, and just so much more. So in this two-part episode, our aim is to truly embrace Bali in all its holiday destination glory. And since we're over planners, we crown these two weeks with as many things as possible. With the ups and downs, here's a glimpse into our 14-day journey on the island. Let's start with Ubud. We begin our day at Outpost Cafe, which is a great drop-off point if you're visiting Ubud Center and want to avoid getting stuck in traffic. It's only a 15-minute walk to reach the Monkey Forest, and some of our favorite cafes are located along this shortcut into town. You can also get a glimpse of what you're in for when you visit the Monkey Forest. You see that? Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Don't look die. Don't look Like every five seconds. Beware, monkeys. Beware, monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> this monkey forest is a huge attraction bringing in loads of tourists you can buy some shirts hats and a lot of shiny souvenirs but just don't feed the monkeys don't even look them in the eyes or steer clear of being naked these are some of the rules you will constantly see as you stroll about <laughs> The grounds here are really beautiful. You're wandering through a huge ancient forest with three temples to admire. The temples and forests date back to the 14th century, making them actually older than Indonesia. So what do you do here at the monkey forest? Well, with about over a thousand monkeys, you simply watch them be playful and do human-like things. They're similar to us, and yet they're not us. You can also get a monkey selfie and watch a traditional dance show. 
it's really a relaxing day out. That is until a monkey tries to aggressively grab something off you. So always be cautious. And shout out to this brave kid for protecting his mum. When you visit Ubud, you'll notice a lot of boutique stores, markets, and more markets. Right in the center is the new art market building. This place is massive. It expands over two sections, both having upper levels. There are also free toilets everywhere, and it's an excellent spot for escaping Bali's unexpected rain. It definitely gets a lot of customers. Now every section has a lot of small stalls put together, kind of selling similar items, which is why you'll see tourists try to barter for a cheaper price. The locals know this and are prepared for this. They are willing to put the price down or at least let you do that back and forth dance of bartering. It can be challenging, but if you're persistent, you can get a good deal. From 130 for one bracelet, 50. Nice. I'm so good at it now, I'm so good. <laughs> But keep in mind, there are also a lot of side roads with market stores set up for your shopping needs. We actually saw two more market places in the center as well. There is just so much shopping to be done. How much? I think strolling through a market isn't just about scoring a good price though. It's about immersing yourself with the locals and that souvenir you buy will eventually become a holiday memory. Brought <laughs> you by Yoga Barn. <laughs> by a promo release, and there's so many different varieties. Like this. Anything is reversible. Thank you. Being in the heart of Bali, Ubud is a mixture of everything. But what I kept noticing though, was a lot of health conscious programs. I had no idea that something like this could exist. There is sacred healing, ground alpha alignment. So that means that to be a guy? That's me in this price. <laughs> mm. Ooh. Craniosacral aquatic therapy, and just so much more. Now, some of them were quite surprising. I think in general, they all seem to try heal your mind, body, and spirit through various and interesting techniques. Whether it's conscious cooking, yoga, or a Brazilian spirit dance night, choosing you is important. But it does cost a lot of money. So out of curiosity, we only chose one thing, to see a local Balinese healer. More on that later. So 
got two types of dances, uh, Legon. And the Barong Dan. We have also another one, is the Kecak Dan. We have uh, every day a uh, performance in Ubud. Uh, we do in Ubud Palace, like in Legong Dan. And another place we have the Kecak Fire Dan. We have uh, every day uh, at 730, uh, duration one hour. Uh, everyone I must to go to, uh, to Ubud to see the Balinese then. Yeah. Every night in Ubud, there are various Balinese dance shows. These dances bring to life stories of gods and heroes, love and devotion, battles and triumphs. You're witnessing stories that have been told for generations. We ended up seeing two shows. Starting off with a demon, yes a demon, can be seen dancing freely amongst the crowd, just having a good time because no one is around to tell him off. Falling into a deep trance-like state and maintaining perfect timing with each other, these two ladies dance precisely to the rhythm of the music. The small details of their hand movements and facial expressions were just incredible to see. I couldn't believe all five performances had been compacted into a one hour show and watching these stories unfold was just something else. following night, we went to see a fire dance show. So the absence of musical instruments is what makes this first performance so captivating. As the epic story of Prince Ram is being told, you'll hear a hundred men or more chanting, swaying, lying down or standing up and intensifying their singing at the crucial moments of the story. <laughs>
And finally, the fire dance wraps up the show. The fire is made from old coconut shells. The musicians will begin by singing and chanting to create a trance in the horse rider. When the music gets louder, he'll start kicking and walking through the shells. They will then break them into the center and repeat the process. Be warned though, if you are in the front row, you may be hit with a few fiery coconuts. He eventually collapses from exhaustion, and the trance-like state finally ends. Thank you. Please have you welcome drink. Thank you. Sit, please. Bali is definitely known as the land of zen, or relaxation, so of course we went to a Bali spa. Now let me be honest, for me relaxing is just watching TV or playing some video games, but I have to admit this is a whole new level of relaxation that I can get used to. It starts off with a welcome drink. Okay, yeah. And then they offer you these lemony fresh towels that basically felt like clouds for our faces. Next up is the big decision, picking a scented oil. The whole place looked like something out of a movie set. It was great. After the massage, I definitely felt more zen, or at least more zenier, and were ready to take on the big hike the next day. <laughs> yeah, start point mm. from here. Thank you. Give the hot Give the hot when you need to turn off, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You good? Yes. Yes. She's not allowed to cafe, but she's comfortable. I'm Alan. I'm Alan. Alan. Gerald. I'm your guy for today. Gerald. Let's go. Thank you so much. pretty good the camera yeah I can see <laughs>
one popular thing to do in Bali is the Mount Bato Sunrise Hike. The hike is about two hours with frequent stops. There are at least 500 to 1,000 people doing the same thing. So sometimes you'll have to wait during the harder parts. It can be very tough and I'll explain why on the way back down. Now, if you forget to pack some food, there are locals selling snacks and souvenirs. You can even rent a taxi to take you halfway up the mountain. Once you make it to the very top, it feels amazing. And the sunrise with the beautiful mountains all around you make this hike even more rewarding. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a huge photo session. Everyone wants that perfect photo with the sunrise, including us. And you'll hear a bunch of drones flying or buzzing around everywhere. It's not a peaceful moment at all. But saying that, it's still a great hike. It's a lot of people. So technically, this is an active volcano and the last eruption was in 2000. As you wander around, you can actually see hot steam rising from the mountains. People will also use incense sticks to create extra smoke in the crevices for some cool photos. <laughs> oh. If you do stay for another hour after the sunrise, there will be way less people. So take your time on the mountains. Jero. Let's guide on the mountain. <laughs> Now I must say, the walk down the mountains is just as good as the top. It's a peaceful hike down, and you're just surrounded by the stunning views of Bali. So why is this hike so tough, even though it's only two hours? Well, the trail we took was the quickest but the steepest one. Half the trail is loose rocks and volcanic sand, so you can easily slip and sink into the sand with every step. It's not a high level trek, but it does take time and a lot of patience. Also, wear shoes rather than sandals, or else you have trouble with those pesky small rocks. And of course, towards the end, you can buy a Bing Tang to finish your successful hike. It's like a Bing Tang ad. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today we're checking out some popular tourist attractions and our first stop is the rice fields. Rice farming is part of Balinese culture and is considered a sacred practice that has existed for centuries. Local communities will have religious ceremonies, rituals, or make offerings to the gods in order to receive their blessings for a good harvest. Every part of these rice fields truly represent the Balinese way of life. We chose these rice fields because it's a lot less packed compared to Ubud's most popular fields to Galalang, which is always busy. Morning. No, thank you, <laughs> yes, there are touristy things in almost every rice fields, like the swings, or lots of photo props, zip lining, and slowly more cafes and condos are being built near the fields every day. But looking beyond that, it's still a beautiful place to see at least once. And who doesn't like a nice photo? Remember, try to arrive early to beat the crowds. Yeah, the swing is uh, very picturesque. I wish I could pull that off wearing that dress. <laughs> I gotta say though, Manik is awesome, a uh, local guide. He speaks Czech and English and switches back and forth just for me. But, uh... You look gorgeous. <laughs> what is that? Hello, four people? Four, four people. So through our time in Bali, we actually experienced two purification rituals, both quite different from each other. This one was held at one of the most popular water temples near Ubud. As you can see, there are a lot of tourists and locals together. So here are some interesting things I learned through this purification process. When you've picked your offering, you should keep it elevated as a sign of respect to the gods. You're elevating it to a higher spiritual realm. Before entering the holy water, you need to pray and make some kind of offering to the gods and spirits as a sign of respect and gratefulness. Once you made your offering, you then cleanse yourself in the water. Each fountain has its own purpose and significance. While participating in the ritual, you can use this time to focus on your thoughts and aspirations. Take a moment to reflect on what you would like to purify or cleanse in your life, whether it's physical, mental or spiritual, but just have sincerity during the practice. It's interesting to see the difference from how locals go through the process compared to the tourist. We wanted to show a bit of touristy spot here, but actually all the process even it's like crowded it was so nice going through it. You don't even acknowledge the people like at all you are focusing on your task, what you are supposed to do and it feels good. From my perspective you see everyone taking photos. No, you don't feel it that you way. Don't feel that no, way? Yeah. At all. I don't know why, but you are so focused on yourself, you know, forgiving people, wishing and mm. repeating it. Like it was actually amazing. I'm so nice. And after feeling purified, you exit through the gift shop. Same price, how much you pay? Nine bits. Hey, hello, two hundred. Ten, okay. Ten, okay. Hundred fifty, yeah. 
Yeah, you see it everywhere. They just bother you all the time. Yeah. We finally out of the gift shop. <laughs> That's a long one. It's a big maze. <laughs> Labyrinth. <laughs> So right near the temple, a lot of locals sell durian on the side of the road. It's durian season around June to August in Bali, and we love durian. It smells bad, but it tastes amazing. However, Chrissy's mom and Alan have never tried it, so we thought, well, now's their chance. <laughs> you really can't stand it. So for context, Alan couldn't even get near the fruit without nearly vomiting, but he kept trying. Alan's not gonna try it? <laughs> Chrissy's mum, however, loved it, though she had to hold her nose while eating it. So try durian when you're in Bali. It can be a hilarious experience. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and finally, to finish the day, we went to another waterfall. This one was quite small compared to the first one. Still, it was beautiful to see and take a few photos. All these dogs, eh? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> This dolphin sunrise trip is definitely a unique experience. To get here, we left Ubud at 4 a.m. for a two hour drive up north to Lavina. Hundreds of dolphins swim freely in the sea near Lavina Beach, and this is why lots of tourists head this way. In fact, when you're out on the water, there are at least 50 other boats looking for dolphins as well. And when one boat finds them, the chase is on. This is the core experience. You're chasing them or trying to keep up with them and kind of competing with other boats at the same time. Some boats will even get ahead of them and just sit there as they swim past. When you do see them, it's an unforgettable moment and that two hour drive for that moment is worth it. It's amazing, it's worth it. It's worth a two hour drive and nearly vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> For an extra fee, you can also watch the dolphins underwater by clinging to the boat with snorkel gear. So after a little awkward coffee break on the boat and seeing the beautiful sunrise, it was time to head back in. No. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so 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 much. Ulu Danu Temple. <laughs> yep, and that was 75,000 per ticket with free water. With free water. Nice. They didn't have to give it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really impressed. It's really nice. Like there's a beautiful lake, mountains, temples. And a lot of people just having fun, like a lot yeah. of them. But it doesn't seem like crowded. No, it's like really uh, good vibes. Good vibes all around. Good vibes. Our next stop in North Bali is Ulundanu, a beautiful temple sitting on a picturesque lake. Now a local guide explained to me that the temple was built in the 16th century to honor the lake goddess Dewi Danu. This whole area is beautiful to walk around and soak up the sun. <laughs> hey, you're, uh, you're famous! One thing to keep in mind though is to visit early in the morning because it gets very busy after 10am. What surprised me is that this place also has a lot of activities as well, almost like a theme park. You can catch a boat ride on the amazing lake, take photos from the many props around the park and of course enjoy the beautiful gardens. <laughs> Next one! <laughs> Next one. <laughs> There's also a tiny zoo, which is a little bit questionable, but I'll let you decide on that. Overall, the temple and lake are spectacular, and simply seeing them is something that I won't forget. Get off the, the grass! With the man with the ridiculous shirt, please get off the grass. <laughs> Professional four-wheel driver. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> right, can I walk through? Yes, of course. Hello, goats. Hello. Hello. You get so close to them, the goats. Yeah, fun new friends here. Yeah. Finally. So if they're all just like, <laughs> you done. <laughs> you know, it's, it's sizing me up, like. You get a step closer. Judging you. Yeah. If goats could talk, that's what they're doing. <laughs> At least you had fun with goats. Yeah. Yes. 50,000. 50,000 each. Ooh. It's pretty cool. Now my first thought when paying for this waterfall in Bali is that it would be something ordinary and average. I was definitely wrong. One thing I loved about this Bali trip is the variety of nature experiences. Even the walk leading up to this waterfall is something else. Now I see why so many people visit Bali's waterfalls. They are really breathtaking. And also the long walk back up is breathtaking but in a different way. To finish off the day, we grabbed some Nazi Goran with a view.
On the highway, we fed some monkeys and witnessed a dog try to playfully battle the monkeys. And the doggy. <laughs> One monkey even attempted the upside down jiu-jitsu grapple headlock, but unfortunately just missed. <laughs> Thank, you, guys. Thank you so much. Right now, local market. So next we checked out a market and tried a local snack called Jaja Uli. This one was made from rice flour, coconut and palm sugar. So how is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> how is Jaja Uli? Jaja Uli is And finally, our last stop was at Taman Ayun, the island's second largest temple complex. These grounds are part of the Mangwin Kingdom and was built in the 16th century. It's definitely a peaceful place when you want to get away from the city. There's also an art gallery and a theatre where the Mangwin royal family tells the incredible story of how and why this temple was built. Golden. Golden pass. And the golden chair. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're getting off the island and taking a day trip to Nusa Penida, where picturesque views of cliff beaches await. I'll be honest with you, this was my least favorite day, and you'll see why. Getting to Nusa Penida has never been easier. With a newly built harbor, gone the days where you would have to walk in the water to board a boat. It's so well organized that a lot more tourists are taking day trips to Bali's island getaways in record numbers. Now it's even busier than before. So you arrive on the island after a 15 minute ride and there will be some people standing there collecting the island's entry fee. Once you pass them, you're good to go. Since there are four of us plus Manik, our Czech and English speaking guide, we had to hire a driver and our first stop is Diamond Beach. So to get an idea of how much travel time is involved in this day trip, let's break it down. From leaving our Ubud homestay at 6am, catching the boat to Nusa Penida, arriving on the docks, then driving to Diamond Beach, this so far was about 5 hours of travel time. So now we only have 45 minutes to explore this beautiful place, because the last ferry leaves at 5pm, which puts us on a tight schedule. 25 each? Yes. Nice. Uh, 
This beach is insanely beautiful. With the massive cliffs rising over the clear blue water, my camera really doesn't do it justice. You could reach the beach area by walking down some concrete stairs, but it can be difficult and time consuming. There is also another viewpoint which you have to pay for, but honestly, the views are already great here. Our next stop is Calican Beach. Now it should only take an hour to get there, but due to traffic, it took almost two hours. The roads are very small for cars, so sometimes you'll have to wait. <laughs> You have 10,000? I don't. I have, I have. Thank you. Surprise. Oh, it's black too. Nice. Yeah, Bindang. I'm a true tourist now. <laughs> Bindang! <laughs> That's really helping actually. I know. <laughs> As of now, swimming is not allowed at these famous beaches due to the many recent injuries. The waves here can be very powerful, crashing against the rocks, and you can easily get swept away. So if you do decide to walk down to the beach area, be careful. One hour to walk down. Wow. How long? One hour to go down and one hour to come back up. Wow. Since we only had an hour here, we just took some photos, soaked in the beautiful views, and of course filmed some cute monkeys. Now after seeing these two famous beaches, we drove another hour and a half to reach a restaurant that was close by to the jetty we arrived at. So after lunch, we went straight there to head home. Mawa, mawa. <laughs> Oh, that's salt water. Is it cold? Okay. Now, when I look back at this day trip, I've realized now it really wasn't worth it. You spend 10 to 12 hours in a car or a boat, and then actually only two, three hours seeing two places. I wish I'd done some more research about this island. I would have stayed a couple of nights to fully appreciate it and possibly do some snorkeling in that crystal clear water. But I think that's part of traveling. You make mistakes, learn from it and move on. In the next episode, we get purified with a bit of healing. Jump to my monkeys, plus a lot more. I hope this video has helped you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.